Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryan here and the topic of today's CCNA quick tip is log this. Isn't that mature? But when I show you these two little commands here that you're definitely going to be using at home labs and maybe on a simulator uh, like GNS3, you're definitely going to see them in production network, especially the first one I'm going to show you, but I want to give you a real world word of warning. That was not easy to say um, about the second one. So a lot of good information here. We're going to be looking at it all here on the live equipment. And we're looking at my console configuration port, my console port config that is. And the first command I want to talk to you about here is that logging synchronous command. This is more of an aggravation preventer than anything else because you can see what happened to me here. I took logging synchronous off. It's not on by default so I just did a no logging synchronous since I had enabled it earlier. And then I just started typing in a simple conf t. And you can see what happened. I got the conf part out and then all of a sudden the console said hey he really needs to know this message right now and then it let me finish my work but with a short command it's a little aggravating with a long command let's say you're writing an extended access list and you got this command that's already almost hanging off the side of the screen anyway and then all of a sudden you got this system config message that just really wasn't all that important what logging synchronous does it does not block those messages it doesn't prevent them from showing up on your screen what you're doing is telling the router basically I want you to hold that message until I'm done with this input what it's doing officially is waiting for a new line so after you type conf t and then hit enter then it would have come up sys5 config i again more of an aggravation preventer than anything else but especially if you're working in a home lab that'll be one command you want to use on your console port now this exact timeout command can be really helpful in a lab environment, but you want to watch its use in production networks. I'm definitely not saying it should never be used in a production network, but you want to be careful. What exec timeout does, it defines the amount of time where exec mode can be idle before basically it kicks you out to user exec. What it's going to do is kick you out of enable mode after a certain amount of inactivity and put you back at user exec. Now again, that doesn't sound like that big a deal until you're working with a home lab and you got like four or five routers there and you leave one and you're configuring one, you leave one to go to another, you go back seven minutes later or 12 minutes later and all of a sudden you're back at user exec and you got to type enable in and if you got an enable password set of course then you have to put that in. So again, it does get a little bit aggravating. So what I recommend you do, especially for home lab networks, uh, is use the 0, 0 value here. And of course, always use iOS help, right? Especially when you're using time-based commands to see exactly what the value is. And let me get out of there and we'll go to the config port. I could have gone there anyway. And you can see it happened to me again right there. See what happens with logging synchronous? Because uh, I typed in, I was going to type in line con zero and see logging synchronous is still off. So it let me type in line and then immediately interrupted me and then here's my con zero here. So you could see where after a while that's you're going to go, oh, we got to get rid of that. So we're on the console port now. Let's go ahead and put logging synchronous back in. As a matter of fact, that's your only choice right there. So we've got logging synchronous back on. Let's look at the values for exec timeout. The first one is going to be minutes and the second one's going to be seconds. And you'll notice that zero is a valid value for both the minutes and the seconds. So as you might expect at this point in your studies, you've noticed whenever you put zeros in for timers, you're basically disabling it. That's what you're doing there with exec timeout zero zero. Now I put this on the console port because I'm reverse telnetting in. I'm using an access server for that. When you're in production networks, I wouldn't use that command. There are some security issues with it, and you don't really just want to get up from a router and just leave it uh, in privilege mode or in enable mode. You want to go out to user exec perhaps and make people log into it. So it does have security issues in the real world, but for your home lab especially, it does uh, become a really helpful command and it's definitely a good thing to know for your CCNA and your NP exams as well. Thanks for watching today's quick tip video. I'm Chris Bryan and I'll see you on the next one.